Mercury's Wake, Series 1, Before Chaos. Dedicated to John, one of the good guys. Last time, we left Bozzy meeting his future before he walks back into the present. I left in the sunset of pride, walking back into where this story began. A mysterious pop-up kino room, and a woman named Imani, who was threatened to become my future. Or so I hope. Je suis le petit Mercury's Wake, Season 1, Before Chaos, Episode 3. What drama may come? We're already here. Don't you think we should play this thing? You know, the Kino? It's really bingo, right? She was cute, but she did like a word or two. Or a hundred. Come on, let's punch some holes in a card. It's not a voting ballot. You mark with short pencils. Really? How disappointing. Folks like to diss what they don't know. Kino is one of the oldest gambling games by about 3,000 years. Some say it paid for the Great Wall of China. Come on, let's play. No, oh, no, ma'am. Kino's not my game. It's, uh... Just a lottery. Don't you mean miss? Huh? You called me ma'am. Sorry, it's a southern thing, and uh, you, you mentioned your ex, so I guess I thought you were married. Oh, no. Marriage is for people with yards. Well, in some ways, she was a lot of humor. My ex is making a movie of this book, but more importantly, this copy of the book is his copy of the book. I took it from that shithead in a moment of sheer shitty shit. And don't ask me to say his shitful name. I know I was crazy, but he's not good enough for this book. Listen to this. The notion of other worlds, of other populations, is thought-provoking, giving my antipathy for the word population. Do I only shun the company of humans, or would I find another species equally reprehensible? What is wrong with me that I think every human interaction is false and meaningless? Why have I always felt like an alien among strangers? Well, we're all strangers. Strangers are nicer than friends. Isn't that line from a movie? A play, but I'm not a quoter. Friends see differences. Strangers see commonality. Interesting observation. I'd like to think of those friends as acquaintances. Strangers aren't judgmental. You know who you truly are. No shit, Jose. Who wrote the book? I wish I knew. The author's anonymous. Why'd you say he? Did I? You called him he. Maybe because the book's about a man. His name is John. John is also a woman's name. Is gender ever cited? I can't remember. I see. The foreword's written by a man. How do you know that? He goes by his initials. Maybe that kind of response is why the person who wrote the foreword used initials in the first place. Besides, authors don't write the foreword. They write the introduction. A woman shouldn't speak for a man or vice versa. Don't we preach walking in other people's shoes? Okay, so how many female authors do you know who focus on male characters? I think you need to reconsider what you're saying. Are you saying I'm sexist? I try not to judge people, because they generally say things before they think. That's me. I don't believe that. I noticed a folded piece of paper in your book. I open it only because people lose stuff all the time at Caesars. It's a point of honor to return lost items. Did you read it? No, it wasn't for me to read, but I could see it was a poem. And I did read the line, I write to be heard. That's profound. Sometimes writing is the only escape. I imagine everyone who writes thinks they write incredibly well as they read and reread what they've written. I don't revisit what I've written. I park it. Why? Sometimes it's best to walk away from things that mean something to you. I write songs, not to be a pop star or anything, and I'm not into brooding in falsetto. I just write for myself. Too many people trying to be famous kind of kills the reach. If you know what I mean. Yeah, I think I do. I write music when I get home late at night. That's when I get to be me. I know this might be asking a lot, but I'd love to hear your poem. Uh, uh, okay. Only if you promise that if we see each other again, you'll sing something for me. Why, sure. She opened the book and pulled out the folded piece of paper. She did it like it was sacred or something. I won't be what you envision. Endure the lie, continue to live in divides too wide, flat lines too blunt. That's not what I want. 
I want revision. I may be from the recent, but I am old. I dream of entitlement, of pride, of people from all spaces, embracing creeds, races. We are whatever our descent. Muslim, Hindu, Christian, Jew. We are people, white, brown, black, and blue. We are nothing more than what we are, yet some feast and thrive on others' scars. Doesn't that bother you? I won't spill hatred and lies, push back in kind. I won't fight blank slates written on by bitter elite, withering and defeat, lacking truth and sound mind. My feathers won't spread in boomer pride. I won't hide in millennial self-satisfied escapism. I see truth. Recognize disparities. Stand up, she said. Words are my peace. Imani. It's beautiful. If you don't mind me saying you don't seem very happy. I mean, people come to Vegas to have a good time. There's comfort in crowds of strangers. Like I said, strangers are nicer than friends. Maybe you just had the wrong friends? Yeah, maybe I'm crap at recognizing friends. We can't get everything right all the time. I know I said let's be strangers, but let's not be strangers. I mean, we've nearly melded in the microwave of Kino fluorescence. If this place actually exists. It's weird. And all the time I've been here, I've never noticed it. Maybe we've slipped into a parallel universe. I'd like that. I'd love me some sci-fi. You know, your first impression of John Kay was only a first impression, right? Can I read you a short bit? I got a minute or two. John Kay, 1.03 There are two windows in this vessel, one that looks ahead and one that looks behind. Behind me is the green planet. Ahead, nothing. Or, more aptly, nothingness. Try to fathom it. I've been on this ship for such a long time. Ground continues to communicate, although I wish they would leave me to my thoughts. I feel like I haven't had space to think all these years, and now the breadth of my thinking time here in this airtight pod is decidedly finite and... still... Christ. Down there, the world wouldn't leave me to my thoughts. Always someone else's mental tyranny. In the dark of this pressureless space, as I float in the cosmic box, I feel I'm at the heart of everything. Am I enclosed within walls, within walls, within walls? Am I in the center of the infinite, or the center of my infinite? Will I die on this mission? No. I am a motorcyclist in a hailstorm, recklessly speeding by the grace of a the slipstream. Is the whole book that depressing? Funny question when we live in a seriously depressing world, but no. Far from it. Sometimes when I read his words, I keep thinking, how is a fictional character reading my mind? And at the point? Uh, fiction, that is. Maybe. I'm Imani. Imani Cosmos. Nice to meet you. Fist bump, feet, or elbow? Well, I only just met. Not to mention we both might not be real. Okay. Footsie. Ow! Okay, that was real! <laughs> Imani's a Kenyan name. My mom's Kenyan. My dad was Greek. I haven't spent a whole lot of time in either place. I'm more American than I wish I were. Why do you say that? Baby boomers got a boom. <laughs> My mother always said, too much talking, not enough listening. Said? You mean says, right? Oh, sorry. I uh, sometimes get lost in tenses. I think the problem in the world is men. Except for my dad. He was one of the good ones. He would have identified the problem as hubris. A fatal flaw. Oh, yes. The great undoing of the mythological hero. I love Greek mythology. Don't go against the gods. Yeah. Did you lose your father? Can I tell you a stupid story, totally unrelated and yet related? I'm not judging. When I was seven, I begged my parents to see Swami Vasu. You met a Swami? Kind of. I had no idea. 
what a Swami was. So, as I was saying, Swami Vasu was the guest of my church, and I, like everyone else, waited in a hot sanctuary for nearly three hours to meet him. I was seven and super dope. Pink tracksuit, pink star under my eye. The problem was, what could I ask an enlightened Swami Vasu? You were seven. After three hours in line, I nailed the question. And that was? What's your favorite tea? <laughs> Fair enough. Ah, uh, this is why I don't tell the story. It sounds stupid. Hey, I'm not judging. Well, okay. It all felt awesome as I advanced, step by step, closer to the Swami and enlightenment. He she looks so peaceful. peaceful. Are you okay? I just said something someone else once said to me. Once. Imoni, you were saying about that Swami? Oh, oh, I'm um, sorry. Uh, so Swami Vasu sat on his mat in a lotus position. He was full of light, and I was, I don't know, entranced. So much so that when I got to the head of the line, I couldn't move a muscle. The Swami kept waving to me to come toward him, but I couldn't put one foot in front of the other. Finally, the person behind me gave me a pretty enlightened push. I advanced in tiny steps while Swami Vasu humbly bowed, and kept bowing, and, and died. That's rough. I never wear pink again, and I try not to think about tea when I meet people. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, I'm an actor. I know what you're thinking. Actors are too sincere. I don't know how to do that. Do what? Be sincere. And by that, I mean working hard at being sincere. I also can't be bothered with auditions and weight loss and... I'd do so much better if I were more Hollywood, you know, able to segue into seamless self-promotion in every conversation. But I suffer from sarcasm and self-loathing, so I'm basically useless. That's harsh. You know, most guys I've met are complete jerks. All they want is to troll tender for a hookup, catfish, breadcrumb bench, and then ghost you. Don't people have relationships anymore? I'm not sure I know what any of those words mean, but uh, I do know people in relationships. <laughs> I live in Vegas, and I bartend, and do room service at Caesars. Oh, that's you then? Yep, that's me. All in one tiny little working class list. Sorry, I didn't mean... She was saved by the buzz. What did you know? I gotta help a buddy out at the barge, bartending. So let me make this quick. I like you, when, and if, you want to have another conversation, give me a holler. Oh, and since you haven't asked, my name's Bozzy O'Reilly, and I wish you luck on Tinder, which is anything but. As I hightailed it to the barge, I heard her say, You think I do Tinder? <laughs> well, glass houses. She was funny, and, uh, truth? Something about her felt like home. Imani, Imani, When I got to the bar, it was pretty empty. Yo, yo, Boz, thanks for doing this. I gotta bounce at five. Got room service. Last half hour only, swear. Sadie will be here for the evening shift. Hey, boy or girl? We like surprises. As they say in opera, in boca a lupo. Say what? It's a long story. It means in the mouth of the wolf. I looked around. There was a guy typing on his laptop at the end of the bar. You good? Another jack on the rocks. Jack on the rocks. Two shots. You didn't ask, but I thought you might appreciate it. I do. I noticed you're writing something. A little piece of fiction. A script about a pop star who turns against his fans. It's told from the perspective of a guy working in a place where the star attraction kills his audience. Don't people write happy stories anymore? Why should they? I don't know. 
not help the way we think. Afraid it's too late for that. Hey, uh, would you do me a favor? Mm, depends. I'd like to know what you think of it. Well, as long as it won't take longer than a few minutes. The guy slid the laptop along the bar. I'm ready. I put on the Trilby hat, my mask, my helmet, whatever is left of my head. I turn off the lights and open the door to this shabby and lifeless motel room. Ahead of me, an infinite hallway. I won't close the door. Whatever I leave no longer exists. The first wave of the pandemic may have wormed its way into our psyches, but the long and wintry second wave scarred us. But humans adapt and celebrate what constrains us. Two hours before a rockin' concert at a Vegas venue, crowds gathered. People lined up six feet apart, submitting themselves to a dry bath of chlorine mist. But tonight, the treadmill stops. Ten minutes to curtain, Mr. C. I'm getting off and looking at time in the city of angels. Beer and pool tables in the middle of the day. My kind of ashram. Or is it? Do I sound depressed? Maybe. Places. How will I survive without my human alarm clock? You'll survive if you stop smoking. Oops. I can smell it from here. You know the policy. It's out. And bam! A stool, a fool, and a spotlight. I put on my trilby, tipping it toward my eyes. Surprise, surprise. Finally, two flutes playing minor key phrases in contrary motion start the game. The monster emerges out of the mire, spewing grim heartbreak in a voice fractured by whiskey and cigarettes. The world-famous singer was writing his own tragedy. Tragedies are all the same, except maybe how they came to be. But no one cares about that. Pretty, uh, pretty heavy. It's dystopian. I mean, what are the odds? Is that the title? What drama may come. Yeah. And this happens in Vegas. It's what I know. Boz, I got here a little early. Christ, please don't tell me he's here again. He's creepy. Walk away, right? Don't worry, Boz. You're one of the good ones. I meandered a bit on the Apian Way and then walked through to the casino, past a bunch of slot machines. I love the casino sound. It's, it's like a symphony. You okay? Yeah, I'm horrified. She was wearing the standard issue Caesar's Palace Roman toga. Everything worked, but her pantyhose. Do you want one? A drink? No. About to start work. I tell you what, just look like you're ordering and I can stop for a minute. My feet are killing me, these damn sandals. Those are some stockings you got on. <laughs> what do you call that color? Taupe. I'd kill to be that color. You'll never see these things run. When I was getting ready this morning, I knocked a kitchen knife off the counter and I went to stab my thigh. Not with these little suckers, they're better than skin on a Jimmy Dean sausage. I've seen you around. Yeah? I'm in room service, and a bartender at Cleopatra's Barge. Good going, but you've seen a lot. I never realized how many weird people there are till I worked here. I just came from one. Nothing new here, just the same old face changing positions. I noticed you were watching something on your phone. Oh, yeah. I'm binge watching some show about a female serial killer. I'm watching because I keep thinking they're going to reveal why I should be watching. And? Nothing yet. I can't help thinking it's wrong to watch this. My girlfriend thinks I think it's sexy. She has nightmares. 
Easy to dream up ugly stuff if you've never experienced it. I think we're all walking tragedies. We just don't know it. That's bleak. It's what I feel. Maybe I need a change. In fact, I'd love a change. What would you do? Be a gondolier at the Venetian. Can you sing? I'm no frogarotti. But put it this way. If I could sing, I wouldn't be pushing a gondola and caterwauling. I could be a minister. Do I have enough personality? Oh, let's face it. The bucks are in liquor and legs. Do you think I'm blonde enough? Oh, don't pander to the creeps. Listen, I'll put up with the creeps if they're high rollers who tip. One palace court server got a ten grand tip the other night, and the guy who tipped her lost fifty grand. When big money's like spare change, why don't you give it away? I like to think of gambling as taking a risk that I might win. Others like to take a risk they might lose. That's too smart for me. <laughs> what I mean is. Maybe losing makes rich people feel real. Feel something. I could work at Chanel. Yeah, you might want to go brunette. Yeah. No. I think got some customers. Don't I always? They're only sitting there for the free drinks. Look. See? They're putting in one dollar and then talking and then putting another dollar and then talking. Every time I start to complain, I take a look at this little name tag perched here on my boob and say to myself, Mindy, this ain't heaven, but it ain't Fresno. Besides... I make a pretty good wage. All said and done. Just hope my feet'll survive. Uh, wait a minute. This is for you. I enjoyed my drink. But you didn't... Ah, uh, you're not just the same old face. You're real special. See you around, Mindy. I, I swear, I had no idea that that woman was behind me. She hit me like a tsunami. I'm so sorry, ma'am. Not only am I forced to parade through the casino in a fuzzy robe and flip-flops, but I have to get run over by someone just to make sure everybody sees me in a fuzzy robe and flip-flops? Why on God's great earth is there no direct access to the Bacchus pool? Truth, she hit me. No wonder. She was wearing dark sunglasses and a floppy hat. Is there a reason why they hide pools in this casino? The Bacchus pool is just out there. Oh, never mind. She craned her neck like she was squint, only she was wearing sunglasses. Are these yours? Yes, unfortunately. That song book bag must be special. It was a gift. Would you like me to take you to the pool? No, I'm going to the elevator. It's over there. Really? My apologies again, ma'am. Taken. Stay tuned to episode four. I could jump. Thank you for listening. To discover more, you can find us at www.werglobal.show. The journey continues.